So my name is Andrew Giuliano. I'm a developer relations engineer at Google, helping to developers be successful with Google Play technologies. And I'm Patrick Martin, also a DRE, and choosing a bad microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're gonna talk to you about everything you need to know on how to be fully optimized for this platform. So in case you're just joining us, Google Play Games on PC is a gaming platform which allows users to play their favorite Android games on PC. Our vision is to make gaming across mobile and large screens seamless and enjoyable. When you switch devices, your purchases and progress transfer seamlessly so you never have to worry about starting your game from scratch on a new device. And with Google Play Games on PC, you'll be able to play games on a larger screen, which can both be more immersive and easier to play with a keyboard and mouse. The focus of this session will be how to fully optimize your game for the platform, uh, and as such will be a little bit more technical in nature. At the end of the talk, I hope you'll come away with an understanding on how to create a great experience for your uh, players on Google Play Games on PC. So let's take a step back for a moment and take a quick look at what porting games traditionally looks like. So rendering that first triangle might be hard and is often underappreciated. Then you have to worry about platform specific libraries and your critical functionalities like monetization and uh, analytics. But with Google Play Games on PC, you get a lot of these basics with almost no effort when porting over your Android game. Most of the Android APIs you use today, like the Google Play Billing Library, will stay intact. And we take care of this hard work so you can just focus on making your game really good for uh, users on PC. Now, as we announced at GGDS last week, I'm excited to share that we are making it easier to enter the Google Play Games on PC platform by allowing developers to start off with their mobile build, which is already being served today. This is part of a new, easier path to come on the platform. Our goal is that as long as your game plays well on desktop, either with just a mouse or mouse and keyboard, then you should be able to join Google Play Games on PC um, you know, pretty easily, right? And to do that, there are three steps. First, you'll need to make sure that your game plays well on desktop. You can try out your game on a Chromebook or connect a mouse to an Android device and see how it well plays. We're also working on making our Google Play game developer emulator public soon, which will give you another way to test your build on PC. An important piece here is making sure your game can be uh, played enjoyably on PC. And if your game is tap only, then you're probably good to go. If you've already uh, added keyboard support for a two-handed game, then you should also be good to go. Secondly, once you're ready, let us know at the link and we'll put you on the list for acceptance testing. Bear in mind that we're just starting the program uh, and we're scaling it up over the next couple of months, so it might take some time to hear back. We're starting with games that have over 30,000 monthly active users and over a 3.5 star rating to ensure that users are getting games that they really enjoy on mobile. Longer term, the goal is to make this available to as many games as possible. So if you indicate that you're ready now, we can keep you updated as soon as we scale up. Finally, once ready, we will test out your game. Quality is really important to us. So along with all the guidance we give you today on optimizing your game, we will also test for stability. We'll also be prioritizing games that have features like progress sync between devices, which we'll talk more about later on. One last thing here. While you can use your ARM build to get started, we will ask you to provide an x86 version eventually so that all PC users can get native experience. Performance. This shouldn't block you from getting started and you can start with your ARM build, but we do recommend making sure you know how to create an x86 build early on so you're not surprised later. So while we're making it easier to get started on the platform, to get the very most out of Google Play games, you should create a really good experience for the user to play your game on PC. And as another benefit, you'll be, able to, you'll be eligible for the full range of promotional efforts from us. So this will be our focus from today. How to best optimize your game for Google Play Games on PC. And we'll cover in detail these five items listed here. As mentioned before, we recommend testing out your optimization on a Chromebook as you go. We're also working on making that emulator public soon. Stay tuned at the link. Now let me hand it off to Patrick to cover more details on how to optimize your game. Awesome, thanks. Uh, as I stated, said before, my name is Patrick Martin, and now I'll walk you through the optimization process to get your game fully certified on Play Games for PC. So, let's see, arrow. I'll do it this way. So, first off, why are we doing any sort of compatibility testing, right, uh, for full certification? It might seem kind of silly since this is already a Android environment running on PCs, um, we're doing cool things like auto-translating mouse clicks to touch events, so your input handling should work as it is. 
and we're, we have an Android-compatible rendering stack, so you don't really have to re rewrite much of your rendering code. But our goal isn't just to make giant uh, phone games on players' PCs, right? We don't want things like touch overlays that players have to configure or might break in menus. Uh, we don't want uh, folks having to fiddle with emulator settings to get the game running just right. Um, we definitely don't want folks to get banned from online play. Obviously, you have to opt into this uh, platform. So it's up to you to just not ban the new emulator players. And you should auto-sync game progress, right? If I'm up all night grinding some epic armor or something, I'd be really bummed out if I don't have it the next day on like my subway ride. So we have this checklist that our testers will go through to make sure your game is fully certified. First, you have to optimize for the platform. This means a, having an x86 build. We did announce, uh, as Andrew said earlier, that we have ARM support, but this will be slightly slower and won't run on all PCs. We also have, um, you also need to find mobile-only alternatives to, uh, to mobile-specific features. So like if you're relying on GPS for something, you'll have to come up with an alternative. Uh, you, we would really hope that you take advantage of you know, the graphics advantage PCs have. And let's see if I want the clicker to work because it skips two every time, but all right. And uh, you would need to rethink your input a little bit since we're not dealing with touch screens anymore. You have to work with mouse and keyboard controls. And you really need to hammer that cross-platform play as I stated earlier. So with that, I'm gonna start walking through how I would port a game. For this game, I'm using Mecha Hamster. I used to be a Firebase DA. This was one of my favorite games to play with because it's, it's kind of fast, and the cool thing is you pick up your phone to tilt it to drive around a maze, which is obviously a feature that the PC doesn't have. So it's gonna be a good use case for porting over an entire game. So my first step is to make an x86 build, and this should be 64-bit if possible. The reason why is on Android, you have something like a two gigabyte memory limit, if you're shipping a 32-bit game, and you run out of that really fast, especially with mobile games. So with Mecha Hamster, if you were to check it out right now from GitHub, it would be a Unity 5 project. It's not hard to take it up to the latest LTS. When you do that, you get this, uh, this settings dialog that lets you make an x86-64 compatible build, just right here. It's labeled Chrome OS, which is actually perfect for play games on PC. And most engines will have something similar these days. Uh, it's built right into the NDK now. So once I have this x86 build, the, heart, like the, the first uh, block is out of the way, and now I have to look at what features are not available on the PC or, and build around them. So for example, I can't use uh, accelerometer control in Mecha Hamster anymore, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to take that out. There are some features that we didn't really build a path for yet in Windows because there aren't any games use cases. Obviously talk to us if you disagree, but contacts is one we don't support. There's a full list on our website. Then also you can't use external storage. You have to use um, scope storage to, uh, for, a more, for a safer way of accessing long-term storage on your phone. Which brings me to you can't really have any runtime permissions. Now, since I made the slide, we've added microphone support to play games on PC, so you can request a microphone. Anything else, if you pop up this dialog, you will not reach full certification. So um, there are also a number of unsupported APIs. All the first person, all the first party APIs we've listed on our website. And unless it's listed under broken, it will work. It's just a matter of how soon we might get to bug fixes if something goes wrong. So definitely check this out, uh, but our goal is to have you bring your game over as is. So we want to fix as much as we can. And a note with all of this, with unsupported features, permissions, or even APIs, we do make it really easy if you want to ship two binaries, one for a PC and one for mobile. Uh, your PC track will be separate in the play console. You can really easily just put one artifact in each. But we'd really like it if you use a single artifact for all Android devices. This way, any work that you do for play games on PC isn't wasted and can be reused on, say, Chrome OS or large screen Android devices. So this is what I'm gonna do with Mecha Hamster today. So for example, I use the feature accelerometer. I just have to say that it's no longer required. And I can still install it on my PC without, without, a, uh, without taking the feature away on mobile. 
And then at runtime, I can just check for the system feature HPE experience. HPE actually stands for High Performance Emulator. It was the code name of play games on PC back in the day, but I guess it lives on now. So um, I do really want to cover how I got around the IMU restriction in Mecha Hamster, but the checklist on our website and in the slides went to graphics now. So I'll just, I'll just have to uh, leave you with a cliffhanger there. So um, just as a reminder of what kind of makes this a fun platform to work with, I've done a few ports between platforms in my time in games, and I find that the graphics is one of the harder things to port. If you're lucky, you can just pull down a sample project that has a graphics system you're already using, like OpenGL to GL, and then you just have to worry about what extensions differ. But sometimes you have to build an entirely new like rendering backend. Like say if you're going to the PC and you can't rely on OpenGL any anymore. And the problem with this is that the rest of the team is blocked until the person starting the port can get this all going and like, you know, designers can actually play the game and whatnot. And modern game engines do help a lot. Like you still might have to worry about the magenta shaders, but um, our goal is to no matter what, get, the, get you going so everyone can start helping you with the uh, port and the entire team can kind of glom on. And one of the ways we do this is by providing OpenGL, OpenGL ES and Vulkan in play games on PC. And if you're a PC developer already, you might be wondering how, right? Because Windows does not guarantee GLES support. In fact, I think by default, it still ships with GL 1.1 and only really guarantees DirectX. So what we do is we use Angle. This is the same library used in Chrome to support WebGL on PCs. So it's already battle tested, works in like PCs all over the world and should be ready for play games on PC, right? We're not rolling out something new for this. And what's really cool is it's sandboxed. So hopefully players are just as willing to just try out your game when they see it in the Play Store as they would on a phone. But even with all this out of the way, your game still looks like just a giant phone game. That's not what we want, right? Y'all are developers, we really wanna help you make a PC port. So um, your UI might be sized for a phone, now it's on a big screen with like, you can have smaller touch targets. Your lower poly models might suddenly be noticeable on a 32 inch monitor instead of a six inch screen. And if you're using uh, the wrong type of texture compression, you could be hitting compatibility libraries that slow you down a little. So during the certification process, our QA folk will look at your game and try to synthesize what we've seen players complaining about in the beta process. Right, so mo most of this is, you know, tighten up the graphics on level three, get the, add a few more polygons to your models, maybe if you have a giant texture stretched across a giant uh, triangle, add a few more pixels to it, or readdress uh, your compression settings so the artifacts aren't as noticeable. You will want to look at your texture compression, because even though we support ETC one and two out of the box for compatibility reasons, this is like an Android system thing, these will be live transcoded hopefully to another compressed format on the fly as your game's running, which will be kind of slow and possibly introduce other artifacts. So if you can use DXTC or BPTC compression formats to just uh, get out what you put into the system. And we also have this category that says support PC aspect ratios. Basically what this means is computer monitors tend to be more square than phones. So a lot of the mise en scene, like the stuff you lay out in your scene, might be off screen, especially if those are important elements. You want to reevaluate re like your projection matrices, make sure everything fits in, make sure your UI flows correctly. Um, our testers will verify either 16 by nine for landscape games or nine by 16 for portrait, but we support as square as three by two and as wide as 21 by nine. You really should support these landscape ratios because your power users will really appreciate it. They finally get the immersive experience they get, you could get on a PC sitting in like a nice battle station or something that they could never have on the phone. We do a few more cool things, like you get resizing for free. This actually works different than other Android platforms. So we evaluate a couple of metrics, mostly the uh, display qualities of your monitor and choose an aspect ratio and resolution that we think best suits uh, the system the player is running on. You only get a single back buffer. If the player resizes it or full screens your game, you don't have to redraw, you don't have to like recompute your like picking matrices or anything. It all just works. But it does have one side effect. Um, if your game is designed for portrait mode, and let's say it's something you want to multitask with, like it's a puzzle game or something, you want to watch like a cool streaming video at the same time, 
You don't want to add landscape support because especially if you didn't plan with it, it'll mostly be empty space that you have to somehow fit in with all your other windows. So if you're like me and maybe want to monitor an idle game while you're working, my, monitor, my uh, manager, oh, he's right there. You didn't hear that. Um, but if that's what you want to do, this is the kind of system you want to support. You only want portrait only. Um, we do have two more quality targets. One, you have to hit 60 hertz. If the emulator is going 60 hertz, just lift your frame rate caps. And we really want you to have smooth audio playback, which uh, shouldn't be an issue if it's smooth on your phone. But if your QA team is listening to that cool company playlist, just make sure they run the game audio every once in a while. Don't ruin too much of their fun, but you don't want any surprises. Um, the last thing I want to talk about before handing it back off to Andrew is input. So once again, getting back to the whole Mecha Hamster thing, but I know a lot of mobile designers are really excited about their touch-centric UIs and touch screens, right? But now you have to go right back to mouse and keyboard controls. We do have uh, some utilities to help, such as the ability to turn mouse clicks into touch events so your input code works as is. But um, for any games that require two fingers, you'll need mouse and keyboard. Or even uh, simpler games, you probably want to give users keyboard shortcuts since they'll really appreciate this. And Android already has mouse and keyboard support. Like, I think the G1, the first Android phone, had a keyboard. So these APIs are there. You just have to light up those code paths. Um, and any work you do here supports Chrome OS, supports large screen Android devices, and we support uh, IME input using the Windows native controls. So if you're shipping a game to a locale that requires IME for typing, uh, we use the same system they're used to in the rest of Windows. Just make sure if you have an edit text off screen somewhere, you test to make sure it's doing what you want. Now on to Mecha Hamster. So right now the situation is if I wanted to play, I would somehow have to pick up like a full tower and start swinging it around, right? Which would not be a fun gameplay experience. But it turns out that like a lot of mobile games I've worked on, we have a way to play the mobile centric controls on the PC, just in editor mode. So I went around looking for all the dot is editor calls in Mecha Hamster and replaced them with this check for HPE experience. Now the reason why I have all this code up here is this is probably about as ugly as I can make it. I'm calling Java from C Sharp and it's still perfectly readable and easy to follow. So hopefully it's not a uh, blocker for anyone in this room. The other thing down here in the bottom, I snuck in this org.chromium.art call. That's Chrome OS. Again, any changes I do here to support play games on PC, I want to support Chrome. Like, my daughter's school has a bunch of Chromebooks. Of course, I want her to be able to play it too. Now, another thing I could do is take over the mouse fully. So by saying that I support hardware type PC, saying that I know how to play on a PC, right? I turn off touch emulation, and it allows me to capture the mouse, like say for a first person uh, control. And in Mecha Hamster, I use this. I leave the mouse as is in the menus and then say like uh, capture mouse on the view in order to get it to move Mecha Hamster around with the uh, mouse cursor. Now it doesn't work quite the way you would expect because we're kind of hacking in movement, so this is not something I would push up to public, but it was a cool thing to test. And we do require something called the input SDK, which don't worry, I know a lot of people get worried when they hear that. This is not a new way to receive input. That would just invalidate everything I just said, right? This is just a way for you to tell the system what inputs are available on your PC port. So the idea is you press shift tab and you bring up this input overlay and then you can click view game controls and that'll show you all the inputs available in the game. And this is for, this is for everyone, but I really like it for power players, right? The first time they play on the PC, you might try to do something like show them a tutorial. This is how the keyboard works. But they're gonna skip it. If they've been playing your game for a year, they think they already know how to play it. And it's not until they get into the game that they realize they're in trouble. So you can say like, these are my actions, these are the keyboard inputs, and any player can bring this up and kind of show it. And I think I'm running low on time, so I should kick it back to you. But we're also experimenting with input remapping. And on to Andrew. Thanks, Patrick. So the last thing on that list was uh, seamless continuity or crossplay, uh, and specifically, this is powered by Google Play Game Services, which we'll talk more about in a second. You know, in general, we believe that a player should be able to launch a game on PC, and when signed into PS, have their progress seamlessly restored automatically. Let's take a step back for a moment. Today, users have more and more devices they're playing their games on, and not to mention they're upgrading their phone from time to time. 
Users expect their progress to seamlessly be brought over from device to device so that they can pick up where they left off. I probably don't need to go into detail about how frustrating it can be to restart a new game from scratch on a new device or needing to reset your password because you forgot about it. And this is why we released Play Game Services Sign in V2 last year, to enable frictionless experience of seamless continuity for your users. With PGS Sign in, you get an authentication system that has the security of Google behind it. A very low, uh, very low friction experience for users. After a short setup, uh, users are signed in without a username or password into all games that um, have PGS enabled. That same user identity is available everywhere where your Google Play game is available. So phone, tablet, Chromebook, PC, allowing you to restore users' progress right as the game starts. And uh, you know we know that a lot of you already have an identity system, so we made it modular so you can easily plug it into your existing system. So with PGS v2 sign-in, integrating PGS is boiled down to a few steps. Uh, and retrieving the ID is just the code that I he have here on the right. So to be considered as fully optimized, we require that you use PGS v2 sign-in in your mobile and PC versions of the game. And in general, when a user is signed in with PGS, their progress should be carried across devices. Uh, you can use your own cloud safe solution to back up and restore progress, or you can use the one that's included with PGS. Finally, when a user is logged in with PGS on a third party account, uh, their progress should be linked so they don't need to restore their credentials automatically when they go onto a new surface. And I know some of you may have, may have questions about this. We have a lot more details about this on our developer site, which I'll uh, show the link for later. Cool, so let's wrap it up here. I think we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, if we look again at the checklist, we've added x86 support, 64 if possible. We've turned off any uh, unsupported features and removed some runtime permissions. We've improved the graphic quality, upda updated our UI a little bit, unlocked our frame weight. Uh, we've added some PC input features. And finally, we've added cross. slide. Cool. All right. So to recap, we've made it easier to start on the platform with your existing build. As long as the user can play with a game, uh, you play your game with a mouse and a keyboard. Signal interest in the link once you're ready, and we'll reach out as we scale the program. We strongly recommend creating the best experience for users on play, uh, Google Play on PC. So uh, you know, with the ad added benefit of some uh, promotional opportunities, um, you know, again, we, we recommend taking some of these, uh, some of this guidance that we've talked to you about today. And you can use your Chromebooks to test and stay tuned for our developer emulator, which is coming soon. Uh, so you can see more detailed videos about Google Play Games on PC at the link. Um, you know, we talk a little bit more about some of the dev tools we've created. Uh, we talk a little bit more about the emulator as well as Play Game Services. Um, the link at the bottom will take you to our detailed developer guidance. Uh, we also have a demo booth near the elevators, um, or the escalators. I uh, recommend going over there, taking a look, trying out some games in person. So with that, I'll conclude today's session. Patrick and I will be here in the front if you have any questions. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Cool.